Welcome, beautiful people. Welcome. We are here doing the pre premiere celebration for the legendary Marion Williams documentary, which is going to be screened for the Cannes Film Festival tomorrow. And we are just so excited. And we want to be able just to be able to celebrate and talk with the filmmakers and really get prepared for this monumental occasion. So I'm going to bring on Mr. Robin Williams. Hello, my love. How are you, dear? I am good. How are you? I'm fantastic. So, so how excited is, are you, baby? You excited? I, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I've been very low key because um, uh, my expectations are, you know, wow, this is so great, and um, I am so ecstatic about this happening. Yes. Um, first uh, documentary that I did, um, I'm just to the point where, you know, so I, I'm trying to be even kill. Um, so I'm just. Uh, okay. Well, Amber, yeah, so I'm bring Amber. Oh, okay. We'll bring her up in a minute. Amber, there you are. Amber, Hello. how are you? Happy Tuesday. Good. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> I'm associated today, Amber. Oh, yeah. Y'all get me. Oh my mm. gosh. <laughs> just another day. Just another day. It's <laughs> just how it is, right? So we are really, really, really excited to be here today and be able to talk about and celebrate this really incredible opportunity that has come up for the Marion Williams documentary. So Amber, tell us tell us um about how it was for you working on this film and what it means for you as a director to have a film in the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, so working on this documentary um, was both um, exciting and challenging because we're working on a piece obviously about someone who's um, fortunately no longer with us. Uh, so there weren't you know, questions I could ask Marion directly like, what else do you want to talk about? And of course, you know, <laughs> I could ask her son, Robin Williams Sr., uh, what, you know, his mom embodied. Uh, but it brought a challenge of making sure it carried her voice without us putting too much of what we want to or what society wants to see. Um, and that was that was that was a challenge, but it was really interesting trying to find that balance. And of course, having it in the Cannes Film Festival is epic. <laughs> um, I am so overwhelmed and overjoyed that it's gotten to where it's gotten. Um, and I think she would be so proud, so proud of her son, so proud of, proud of the piece. And that's really all it's about, making sure, you know, this would be something she would check off on, ultimately. Um, right. And I right. love that. Yes. So I want to say to our audience that there is a link there for you. If you would like to come on the live stream with us and ask any questions or give any feedback, or if you, if you knew had the opportunity to know Marion Williams or to experience any of, any of her music, we welcome you to click on the link and come live on with us here on the live stream to talk with Amber and with Robin and just to talk about Marion and the wonderful incredible legacy that she left here in gospel music. So um, the other thing is there is a link there for you also to register to see the film tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will be able to view the film during the Cannes Film Festival. If you click on that, click on that link and register, you must register in order to be able to see it. So um, Robin. Yes. Let me ask you, so um, how important was it for you to be able to see this, this documentary come to fruition? Uh, it was very important. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while now um, because of uh, being a son and knowing who my mother was, you know, you take some personal pride into things that were happening and some of the 
other gospel singers was getting um, recognized and um, films were being made and um, and I knew I had to do something uh, that would recognize my mother, all the accomplishments. Um, first for a lot of things for gospel singers um, and um, As a son, I just decided I needed to, again, um, do something. Didn't know how or didn't know which way I wanted to go. Um, but um, finally, it kind of clicked that I needed to do something and get it out. Uh, before, I was just putting putting things on Facebook or and YouTube, uh, some of her concerts or songs that she was saying uh, for Black History Month. But then uh, I got to a point where I needed to get it bigger. And um, so when this uh, opportunity came and I presented it to Amber, um, it was one of those, you know, that it was really, really touching my heart that I needed to really, or burning in me, the sensation that I need to get this out. So uh, to see this come to at this point, um, it's really, it's really exciting. I can't believe through all the things that we had to go through um, that it has come to a point now that we're, you know, we're at a point now that this can go even further, uh, not only as a documentary, but also it could be a feature film. And so, and then there's other branches that can um, branch out because of this, and all because of uh, me trying to finally and getting help from um, African American women in cinema. Yes, um, it, it's it's been you know it's amazing to see it come to fruition. Yes, so. The film is going to be presented at the Cannes Film Festival through African American Women in Cinema's partnership with Pavilion Afrique. And like I say, the, the, the link is in the comments there for you all to click on and sign up and register to be able to see the film. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the trailer right now and then we're gonna come back and have some more questions for Robin and Amber. But let me tell you what's happening to me. I'm having, I'm having my trouble. You really didn't, wasn't interested in the fashion. I see. You were more interested in souls then, you know, people joining the church. And I mean, souls came to Christ. It's not the fine homes and the no, fine cars no. and the jewelry. It's yeah, no. what have you done with your well, life? Eventually. What have you done to help someone else? Yes, sir. And I certainly want to be, and I want to be a lady. She was like the first lady of the United States. Posters everywhere. She's in town. They loved her overseas. She was the lead singer of the Ward Singers. When everyone recognized them as the most important group, and everyone recognized her as the most important member. She was the only black gospel singer that was actually honored at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in 1994, sitting up there with Johnny Carson, President and Mrs. Kennedy. I had the big, brave, young voice that changed music. The young Marion, as we know, inspired people. Everyone from Little Richard to James Brown, to all other levels, she was the great inspiration of Nina Simone. I'm happy. She was born, as she always said, to sing the gospel. It was something that was implanted. She had to get a quadruple bypass after she had gotten the Kennedy Center Award and the MacArthur Foundation Award. Her story was a great instance of good news and bad times, finally getting the recognition that she deserved and then dying within a year. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. So, very Amber, powerful. Yes, very, very powerful. 
So Amber, when you were doing this and putting this all of this together, the footage and the, the voiceovers and things like that, how was that process for you? And you know, how did you envision the whole thing coming together? Yes, yeah, so I found out from Mr. Robin that there was a interview, a radio show interview uh, that Marion did in Philadelphia. And it was about 50, 55 minutes long. And she goes through her whole life. She tells you the good, the bad, the everything <laughs> um, yeah. in her own voice. And yeah. I just wanted to take that 55 minute clip and expand it into a timeline of her telling it from her own story, from her own perspective, because there's no better way for her to do that than using her own voice and her music. Uh, so we, we did that and we created the timeline really based on on her interview um, and built built it from there. Right. And it is really, really an amazing, amazing piece of work. So um, you. Robin, tell us, like, give us something. Can you like give us a story that you can remember about your mother? Um, I know there's many stories that you have told me, but if there's something that you could say is one of your fondest memories of your mother. Um, the fondest memories is probably being as a mother. Um, the times that we shared um, were were special because a lot of the times, until I got into tenth grade, I really didn't stay with my mother. Um, I stayed in with my father and grandmother in Chester, and um, so my mother was in and out, out of the country or in the country, but out of Philadelphia. So I couldn't really stay with her. Only time that I could, if she just happened to be home for the week, um, from a tour or from somewhere singing, then the weekend I would come home, come there and spend some time with her. Um, it, it was fun times. I'm not going to say that. We had our moments because, um, you know, I was, I guess you could say I was spoiled. Um, you know, being a young man and having almost anything that I wanted in life that I could have as a uh, teen, a child and a teenager. Um, I had the both of um, both worlds with my father and my grandmother, and then with my mother. Um, those times being with her, um, going to church Friday, barbecue Friday night, Saturday after Saturday morning, Saturday night at the church again on uh, Sunday. Um, she loved to cook. So um, that was one thing that my mother didn't have to worry about. I didn't have to worry about with meals. She, you know, she kept, she cooked everything. And um, so uh, her just being home was a good thing that so I could actually really, I knew my mother, but I didn't know her. If you if you if I'm saying that right, I knew her as my mom, but because of the separation and what she had to do, um, coming to see her on weekends, you know, sometimes that's just not enough. And then going back for a whole week and don't see her and may not see her for two weeks or a month or three months. Um, so. You know, trying to understand her and she's trying to understand me, you know, um, I can say it was ups and downs. But now the, the, the performing with her was um, a benefit because not only I was able to play, play, with, play for her, uh, I, and as her child, you know, I got some special benefits. Um, so, um, you know, some payments, I might got a little extra because I'm a son, you know, I didn't tell nobody, but, you know, um, but that's the way it is. Or, you know, me meeting somebody or going with her uh, somewhere that I, I would have to meet, you know, I never met before. 
um, it was some of the benefits and the, the greatness. And it was not just the material thing, it was just being with her. Because uh, my mother could, she was a, she could joke, she could tell jokes, she could tell my life jokes about different things and quartets and, you know, uh, her being on the road um, with the water. So yeah, it was it was that was special time. Okay, great. So we have Tara Renee joining us. <laughs> Hi. Hi everybody, how are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Happy Hello. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you. Yay. Happy Tuesday Happy to you. Us as the founder of African American Women in Cinema. Welcome, Tara. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Karen. <laughs> Hello, Robin and Amber. Hi, Ms. Tara. Hello. So we're here to talk about this amazing documentary that is going to be yes. um, streamed tomorrow at the yes. Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to remind everyone that the link to register to see all of the films that African American Women in Cinema is part in partnership with um, Pavilion Afrique, all of those movies will be available for you to see. You must sign up. And register, and the link is there for you to sign up and register. You may as well go ahead and do that while you're watching us here. Click on that link and sign up. And also, there is a link there if you would like to come on live and talk with us here in this in this space. For if you want to ask a question, or if you want to give a feedback, or if some of you out there may even know have had the opportunity to know Marion Williams or to be so influenced by her music, we invite you to come on this live with us here tonight. So Tara, I want you to tell everyone about African-American women in cinema and about this amazing partnership that you have for, with um, Pavilion Afri. Sure. Well, African-American women in cinema uh, is a nonprofit organization. We've been around for 23 years. And our mission has certainly been and continued to be to bring awareness of talented women filmmakers, whether they be writers, directors, or producers, um, globally. And so we provided, this entity exists to provide a global uh, platform to showcase talent of these magnificent women. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, we were actually in the throes of organizing our 22nd annual film festival, uh, doing just that, showcasing films, and also having uh, an educational co component, which consists of keynote panels, workshops, when the pandemic uh, out outbreak happened. So we were then, uh, I don't like to use the word force, but we were introduced <laughs> to, the whole, <laughs> to the whole online world on a whole other level. And I must say it's been a, a very powerful, unique, rewarding and rich uh, experience uh, to be able to have showcase uh, women's films on a monthly basis uh, when we created the film, I'm sorry, the uh, program, uh, African American Women in Cinema Media Series. And uh, it was amazing because the audience or the public uh, at large supported these works uh, through their donations. And, and from that, we were able to give these women who participated grants. So that was extremely helpful. And then due to the success of that, we are now doing a monthly educational series in which we bring in prominent industry professionals from various careers, producing, writing, directing. Uh, the month of July, we're going to have a costume designer who worked on the uh, film Brutus uh, and the Black Messiah. So it's going to be interesting to hear her talk about the costume uh, aspect of things. And so um, we launched that back in January and and folks have been getting insight, rare insight, because what I really appreciate about the talent that participate with us, uh, thank God we create a, a, a safe space where they feel comfortable to bear all, if you will. And really that's helpful uh, from an honest perspective, because when people are pursuing a career, especially in media, 
you know, where there's so much deception. Uh, and, and that's what a lot of media is, it's deception. You know, mm. it's a preception deception. So to hear people pull the blinders off and tell you what the real deal is, is just rewarding. So we always encourage those who are looking to uh, gain a career with whatever aspect uh, that we are advertising for the month uh, of the uh, prominent industry professional. And then, you know, they get the opportunity to ask them questions directly. You know, no right. going through the office, you know, let the assistant get the email. We'll respond to you. And then it's like five years later. Oh, you know, right. you know direct access. So that's what we yeah. uh, look to do. And so the other thing that I am so pleased that we are doing, uh, uh, we are hosting our weekly uh, filmmaker series, which we have the the incredible my sister friend Dr. Karen, who hosts it, and her wonderful organization is presenting oh. the series on the Clubhouse app. So another unique opportunity for those who are looking to understand filmmaking, and these people are telling. The real nitty gritty. Yes, they are. And something you're not going to get at film school paying tons of money. Right. So it's it's a very unique chance to get in. It's free, and to get gain that insight and be encouraged and inspired because at times uh, filmmaking can be a very very lonely journey, and then you know because it's not a lot of. Uh, support and encouragement because it's so competitive, you know. Right. Uh, so right. this one feel they need to put the other one down so they can get the shine on their work. So anyway, so that's what we have mm -hmm. going on. And now leading up to our big event that we're having right now, yeah. uh, which is the Cannes Film Festival, a little, a little quick short story. Uh, I am an alumnus of the Cannes Film Festival. Awesome. Uh, my uh, very first feature film that I helped produce was the only woman uh, above the line as an associate producer, uh, only black period uh, in, the, in, the, in the whole crew and cast, uh, mm -hmm. which was a very unique experience. And to be able to have a film uh, that's, to do a film really, and then have it to be selected for a main film festival like that. They called it the uncertain regard category because they couldn't figure out the judges and the jury couldn't figure out what category they wanted to put it in, but they felt that the talent was so strong they could not ignore it. So it was a very unique opportunity to go to the South of France, walk down the red carpet, Seen all the media. But it's going to come. And, uh, <laughs> you know, to just be in a position where your my name was in major uh, yeah. film publications, Variety Magazine. First time I saw my name, I said, wow, I'm in Variety Magazine. <laughs> So you know, I was really very pleased. And then to uh, receive a call uh, earlier this year from a very good associate of mine who told me because of the pandemic, it put the Cannes Film Festival in a unique situation. They normally have it in May, but they had to push it back because all of France was shut down completely. That I did not know. Wow. And so because of that, now, uh, the pavilions, which is an integral part of the festivals, almost kind of considered like a sidebar, but a very integral part of the festival, uh, their market. And uh, what the pavilions are, it allows different countries to talk about their film industry. Now, when I used to go, I would always go to the pavilions. I would go to the American Pavilion. There they would have film screenings. They would do keynote panels. They also had a, a section, which I love. We can just grab free coffee and then work out your deals if you met a distributor after, after a screening. Right. So it was just such a unique uh, place. And um, so the Pavilion Afrique, my first time there, I met the, the civil, one of the civil rights icon, Reverend Jesse Jackson. 
Okay. And I chuckled uh, because here we are on the beach. He has on church pants, church shoes, and a, and a shirt, a church shirt. <laughs> I'm like, you on the beach. But anyway, uh, that is what you call true to the to the barrel, the marrow of the bone. It's all in his DNA. But anyway, so the Pavilion Af Afrique hosts several African nations under one tent. And there they highlight the best of the best filmmakers. Uh, they give them an opportunity for their films to be looked at by buyers, distributors. And so when I got the call uh, earlier this year stating, you know, the whole shift, half of things are going to be online and that they were really wanting to do a partnership. I was so pleased. And the timing, you know, I always talk to Brother Robin about that. That's like a lot of our conversation. Timing, 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 timing. Yes. What yes. a unique timing this is on many fronts, you know, we're right. dealing with the whole racial reckoning. Uh, so being under the umbrella of the Pavilion Afriques, where all black people are, yes. is very <laughs> unique within itself. Yes. Uh, the director told me that she has a heightened interest this year, globally for people just talking about the fact that they're looking for films made by black people. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, on the heels of Tulsa, which we just came from, where this whole hundred year uh, have come to light, centennial. Right. Where our ancestors were murdered and mm -hmm. the yeah. history was trying to be erased. And to now experience this turnaround yeah. in this particular community, which is ricocheting, ricocheting across the world, it's just un. Believable. So I'm super excited that uh, we're doing this. And because of the, the timing and the alignment, mm -hmm. we're getting incredible attention. Yes. So I'm really, yes. really pleased. And I am just pleased that all the filmmakers who participate in this are so talented. Yes. Uh, my, my doll baby, Amber Monet. She's our doll is, baby. You know, <laughs> just a oh, no. sweetheart. And talented, yes. Oh, so to be too. able to yes. put these people on the on the world stage and say, "Look what I got! Look what I yeah. found!" Yeah, so, such so a blessing. I I'm super duper excited, and I tell you, uh, after my first meeting, I was so overwhelmed. Now I don't get emotional uh, that much, I guess because all the years just doing what I do and going through so much. I think. I've been drained from in that department, but I was so overwhelmed and so grateful to God that he allowed me to be this unique conduit mm -hmm. to put forth the talent that he touched to create mm -hmm. films for such a time as this. I was yeah. beside myself. Yeah. And especially when I heard Tanya, our other filmmaker said that she had a sense of urgency to wow. do her film. Right. Did not know within seven months there was going to be a shifting wow. with yeah. her program. But see, God had all that in mind. I didn't know that either until mm. I got the call. I said, what's going on? Because I got call texts like, okay, you know, wh who's blowing up my phone? What's happening? But I mm. did not know. And it reminded me of a time when I heard a minister say, he said, you know, when it's time for you to be blessed, nobody can stop it. No right. Wow. Hell, That's right. That's right. Your neighbors. Right. Nobody. And he said, because the blessings, they have all your contact information. They have your telephone number, your mailing address, your email address. And let me tell you, I am a living witness that your blessings have all your contact yeah, come on now. Amen. Come you you gotta start preaching. Wait, listen. I know. <laughs> I'm going to do it if I get an offering. <laughs> I was gonna say we, we collect offering. Okay. I'll get ready to do it. We have um we have a guest that wants to come up on stage. We're gonna bring him up now, Brother Greg. <laughs> Brother Greg. Yeah. Oh God! Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You call me with a rib bone. Yeah, rib bone. 
That's my that's one of my brothers. How y'all doing? Good. Good. How are you? Doing? All right, I'm just listening in right now. I'm just uh, understanding the concept of what you guys are going through and talking about and stuff like that, sitting here with my other half. Hey, sis. Hey, hey sis. Hello. Yolanda. So we decided, we decided to enjoy you guys during dinner this time. Awesome. So Great. You, Great. you take me off screen so I can finish snacking and I'll oh, come okay. back later. Come up for Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but while we on, I just want to tell everybody about these three ladies. I told my wife I'm gonna get y'all today. These three ladies here have I put love up them with so you. Much. No, I'm yeah, that's what you rest them on. <laughs> okay. Oh, these three ladies. If I, I can, ooh, one time, but no, they've been uh, <laughs> with me. I love them. Uh, that's because I could be, I could be a piece of work, and I know I can. And um, no, I just true. thank God, oh, <laughs> I thank God for these women. <laughs> they like, uh, I, I can't do, I can't do nothing like I want to, because they be right on, uh, be right on it. So I, I am so pleased and so honored to have these ladies um, in my corner. Um, it's, it's truly amazing. I love them all. And um, I just wanted to say that. So I, if we ever get off, if I didn't get a chance to say that. <laughs> oh I also to wanted to add, I think it's very interesting with the theme of this piece with Marion um, and how she carried a lot of people with her from mm -hmm. her community into her industry and into her, her world and her fame. She didn't do it alone. And I right. think as a community, um, and particularly, I think of, you know, Miss Tara, Dr. Karen, like you guys really do embody that same spirit of bringing mm -hmm. those under you to carry yeah. them into that legacy with you. And I think once it's all said and done and when we all leave, we don't know the time that it'll be. What have you done with your life? Mm -hmm. Who have you helped in your life? Mm -hmm. And for me, I've been inspired with so many female powerhouses, <laughs> uh, both, of course, the legendary Marion Williams, but you both. Um, and it inspires me to, to do the same thing, you know, like what organization, nonprofit can I start? Uh, who yeah. can I help? Who can I mentor once I get to that place, you know, that I've learned so much? I can't keep that knowledge for myself. And that's exactly how she lived her life. She corrected you. She, she taught you. She, she, you know, told you what you needed to hear. And that's so oh, something that's kind of lost, so um, unfortunately, um, amongst at least my generation. Um, so I was inspired by that. So thank you both. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Amber, yeah. let me um, ask you because yeah. some people may not. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Speedy? Oh, no, go ahead. I, I'll talk about that later. I was saying how my mother, she loved helping and bringing people with her at her local church and people that she had worked with to get opportunities to either play for her or sing background that people, some people may know. Um, she took my cousin, uh, Rudy, he was a, a piano player, um, and she took him overseas. She took my other cousin, Iris, overseas to be a background singer. She took people like Stephen Ford and all of them um, to play for her. Um, she, took, uh, she took me and, like, you know, and gave me opportunities. She took people from the choir that were singing at our church choir locally um, and gave them opportunities to travel with her, sing overseas and sing background. So she always was willing to give back. And even some of the older, the when the, some of the ward singers were still living, like Will, Willa Ward, um, she would take Willa and my Aunt Frances Stedman, who sang with her with the ward singers and with the Stars of Faith, you know, as they got older and things were getting slowing up for them, um, she she would take them or, or create a show for them. Um, we would go to Atlanta. We would go to different places for them to either, you know, for them to sing and to, you know, make a little change. 
she always willing to she always was willing to do that and you know that's one of the things that in my life um i had i had an interview yesterday and i said one of the the things that i want to do is once this movie is made uh whatever compensation that we get that i would pass it on to and i think i talked to tara about this and i don't know if i talked to amber my wife about being maybe a, a partner that if whoever filmmakers need help with some money that I can help them, uh, you know, do something because I want to be able to give back to 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 the people so that because I know what it takes now to make a, a, a just a documentary. It's a lot, and when you're doing it by yourself, you need help, and a lot of times you don't get that help. And um, hopefully, God will bless me that through this, that we can help other people. You know, um, so that's why I'm say. sorry, interrupted. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Um, what I wanted Amber to do is to tell those uh, those you know our audience that's listening um, what the role of a director is in in a film because they may not know. Yeah, the director, if I could simplify it in the best way, is the puzzle piece maker. Um, it's the person that takes the lens of both the audience and the people presenting their piece. So you kind of have to be that middle person that gives the, gives the, the framework for the storyline, so creating the beginning, middle, end, with also keeping the integrity of your subjects. Um, I would like to all like connect if compare it to maybe a director of a choir mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. where you know you have the singers, they mm -hmm. it's their story or their voices. You're really mm -hmm. just making sure it all flows into a song, you know? Mm -hmm. right. um, it is an art, I think, uh, for sure. Um, I love it. I I I I so enjoyed working on this piece. Um, but it, it's a challenge too, because you have to put it, the puzzle pieces together in a way that it'll be received. Mm -hmm. And that's your job. Um, right. And it's, it's very rewarding because you get to obviously, you know, mix and match and help with both editing and, you know, the film filmmaking process. So you're involved in a lot of pieces, um, but it's, it's only one role. There's so many other roles in this this piece that are so integral and vital. The director's a creative putting the pieces together, but then you have the producers that, you know, say, hey, um, what topics are we gonna address? What are we gonna stay away from? Who's our target our target audience? Um, how long are we looking to they they do a lot of the logistics, which is so important as well. And of course the subjects who we wouldn't be here without. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope that explains what a director is. It does. And it was, um, we were fortunate to be able to be on the pitch workshop that was presented by um, Pavilion Afrique yeah. this morning. And I'm telling you, I learned so much. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So much about um, pitching and not just even about pitching, but the whole idea of really knowing your audience and really knowing how to talk about what it is you're doing and how to be able to make it so that people are really interested in what it is you're trying to do. It, it was really, it was, it was really an amazing, amazing workshop. So um, Tara, the other thing I want to do is um, one of the things that I really, really love about African-American women in cinema is the idea that we've come together to do to be a part of this film festival and you encouraging us to not only think about what it is we're doing, but to also think about the other filmmakers and to be able to also support one another. So um, I want you to talk a little bit about that. And we're going to show, we're going to show um, some of the trailers oh, great. The other films that are available because we, we really do believe in banding together and helping one another. You know, it's not, um, yes, we have a vested interest in the legendary Marion Williams, but we also want to acknowledge that there are other filmmakers 
who are part of this incredible opportunity. And we want to be able yes. to let people see some of what's coming up with them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Karen. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, yes, we are uh, featuring six, total six films. Of course, the legendary Marion Williams and also uh, feature films uh, that we are showing is the Versace story called What's in the Name? Uh, mm -hmm. The Versace story that really deals with uh, another Versace. Everyone knows Johnny, uh, who unfortunately mm -hmm. was killed. Uh, and that was because he had uh, the American market. And Alfredo, who came out before him, uh, he was mainly in charge of the European market. So he had a lot of his audience in, in Italy, Canada, uh, Korea, all of them over there. So when Johnny unfortunately passed away, then he started getting the no notoriety that he so well deserved. I think he's extremely talented. But then, you know, things happen when there's a lot of influence and money involved, family goes ballistic. And that's exactly what happened here. And he talks about that in so detail and how he was sued and kidnapped twice. Amazing journey. Uh, but yet I had the unique opportunity to meet him and just a wonderful spirit. And even though he went through that serious traumatic uh, situation for many years, it could not take away his gift of fashion. And yeah. so that's definitely uh, depicted in the film. The other film that we are showing. Hold on, we'll play the trailer for that. Right oh, okay, now. great. Okay, thanks. been fighting over this name uh, for a period of about 13 years. When your name starts to become a brand, not to mention a fashion brand, it's then even more important because it's bigger than itself. Losing his label, losing his place in his design world. The only phrase I could use my name is, I guess, on my doorbell and uh, my driver's license and my mail. He's been angry, but it didn't hold him back at all. You know, I think it made him stronger. What's in the name? To me, everything but nothing. It's about here. And one thing about Alfredo is he has heart and he has talent. And he has never stopped being Alfredo Versace. Wow. Every time I see that trailer, it just, it blows mm -hmm. me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cam, for playing that. And people need to hear that story because it is so in-depth about, you know, if you are a true designer from the heart, what you have to look out for as you pursue, you know, your calling, if you will. And he really uh, dropped some wonderful gems. And I think that any inspiring designer, they this is a call for them to see, you know, this pioneer, if you will, uh, what mm. he went through, just to gain some, some really in-depth insight. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome movie. So we also have um, Hemings. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah, Very. Interesting, too. Yes. Uh, first of all. American Ghost in the Kitchen. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Karen. First of all, you know, uh, we, we come from a community of very gifted and talented people from the day, unfortunately, that we hit these American shores in 1619, you know, and here was a man, a chef. Seven in the 1700s, cooking, and his food was so popular and so famous. He created the macaroni and cheese. He created mm -hmm. for you guys. You know how come we didn't know about this? Really? And it took a chef that's with us today, Chef Ashbell, mm -hmm. who is a history book himself. We have to do a film on Chef Ashbell. <laughs> <laughs> who ended up living in France, 
staying in one of the homes of uh, James Baldwin that was owned by James Baldwin. And he gravitated towards the story. And it is through him that we get to learn more about this incredible chef. Yeah. So I'm super excited that we're screening this. It is truly a strong educational piece. And uh, I encourage everybody, uh, everybody to see this, especially if you're interested in cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, we're gonna play that trailer now. French fries, firm ice cream, macaroni and cheese, whipped cream. It went from one slave kitchen in Charlottesville around the world. My name is Ashbel McElveen. I know that there's a ghost in America's kitchen because he visited me, James Hemings. People don't know who James Hemings is because he was a slave and he did not fit the mold. Every Southern chef, every single one of them has the granddaddy, James Hemings. James Hemings was Thomas Jefferson's brother-in-law, but also his enslaved property. With the training that basically no American chef had at the time. I think he was murdered. When you're honest about this complicated history, all of a sudden, this American narrative makes more sense. James Hemming is America's culinary founding father. Who knew? I'm sorry, Dr. Karen, I didn't hear you. I said, who knew? Who knew? Yeah. See, you know, and this is what timing is all about, because a lot of things that was hidden from us is now coming to the light. And yeah. I am so grateful to be a part of this turning point in this time, in this era, and in this history. And it's so important. And now, you know, uh, there is won't be too much of an excuse uh, to say, I, well, I didn't know. I mean, we can still kind of use that a little bit as information is coming out, but it is up to us now, once this comes to the forefront, to really look at it, read about it, engage in it, so you can be well informed. We had a lot of founding pioneers who really paved the way in the time that they were in, and it was rough. Not yeah. to say that's oh, not rough for us yeah, now, yeah. but they had an extra, extra layer of roughness and hardship. Yes. And yes. they still powered through it and created all these things. So it should, at the very least, in my mind, be inspirational. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we're going to do, um, for the love of digs, this is going to be a little more challenging. But let's just see what we can do here. I call him the big homie. He's a real big, big homie. Diggs probably seen so much stuff. Um, we'll probably stop dudes from doing so many things in the neighborhood. I mean, he had to be he had to be a superhero when at a time when it was probably it probably made more sense to mind your business. And it's tough because you asked me to separate the basketball, but to be truthfully honest, I think that's what helped him keep a grasp for this community because I don't play it in the garden. I played in the Staples Center. I played in about every arena you could be in. And probably the most important games I played in my life is in this Coliseum. For the love of digs. Yeah, what, you know, uh, to, to know that, you know, there was a man that existed in that community at that time who was called to those kids who needed that level of guidance and support is outstanding. Right. You know, uh, that ram in the bush was just a godsend. And to hear the children now who are adults 
talking mm -hmm. in a very affectionate way how this man changed their lives, literally ripped them from a path that could have destroyed their life altogether because of the environment that they had to be in. And to have someone in that environment say, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going down that, that road. Right. You know, to, to extend that level of care and love in addition to, to having his own family. Mm -hmm. So that type of reservoir of, of love and care, it, yes. it, it was divine. It was a God yes. assignment. I don't even know, you know, if it's even in the human capacity to love, you know, like that with so okay. many kids mm -hmm. and you have a full-time job in a family. Right. Mm -hmm. The way that these people talk about as if this man was in their house 24 uh, uh, hours, seven days a week. Yes. You know, and so that within itself to, and then to have one of the, the children who is now an adult filmmaker, Tanya, who we're yes. very proud to have her on board to be so compelled to want to pay this man homage that she was willing to throw it all on the line, made major sacrifices right. to tell this man's story because this is how deep this man touched her. Yes. It's just mm -hmm. mind blowing. And it is a testament that needs to be seen during these times. There are really people out here who do care. Yes. <laughs> Really do care. Yes. And and yes. this man is a living witness. And I'm just the whole thing is just a big inspiration to me, is an encouragement, and it is so good to see that element yes. of love yes. in our community in that way. Yes. In the projects. You know, yeah. keeping all this negative stuff. Oh, this one got shot today. Oh, this one, you know, but never a Mr. Diggs. Right. So I am so grateful that she was able to utilize whatever resources she had to bring this to light, to show the world, you know, that not it's not all bad. Right. <laughs> it's good elements here. And I am grateful that she was able to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you're just joining us, we are talking with Tara Renee of African American Women in Cinema. We're talking to Robin Williams, the son of Marion Williams, and Amber Monet, who's the director of the legendary Marion Williams, which will be screening tomorrow for the Cannes yeah. Film Festival. There is a link in there for you to sign up, to register, to be able to see the Thank film. You. It will be showing tomorrow, Wednesday, July 7th. 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have any, if you're in any other time zones, you know. <laughs> I'd say that would be 12.30 Central, 10.30 Pacific. And if you're joining right. us right now from another country, we have 7.30 p.m. CET and 7.30 p.m. CAT. We can't help you sure. beyond that. <laughs> but... We got all of that in there, okay? Yeah, probably, yeah got it in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, we're gonna have we're gonna show one more trailer. Great, we're great. And um, we're gonna show the Marion Williams trailer again. Oh too. yes, you may not have seen it in the very beginning, but right now we're doing Chicago America's mm -hmm. Game War. We need some vigilante crew. I'm gonna tell you what we need. So these little old jokers run around who shoot us, you gotta take them all, uh, slip applies, cut their shooting fingers off. Chicago is back in the national news. With 74 people shot and 12 fatalities, this is now one of the bloodiest weekends on record. Citizens of the city can't let their kids walk on the street, be on the front stairs even. It's a little boy that I know, he's three, four, five years old. He's been shot twice. 
There were so many bullet holes, and she was bleeding from everywhere. Violence is the manifestation of our public policy feelings across the board. And this this is sad, man. 11-year-old is shot. Boom, 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 boom. And a 17-year-old is shot in the face and dead. I'm thinking to myself, I could be the next one to get shot. Dead. Anyway, right here. Gone. And angled. Forever. It is war. And that Taliban war is even worse. Facts. It's worse, man. Wow. Wow. And yesterday here in Philadelphia, there was a sh- was yesterday here in Philadelphia, the police found 78 shell casings at the scene where this shooting happened in Philadelphia. It, it, it is just, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't, I, I just don't even know what to say. Since then, they just added, uh, it's 84. 84- 84 killings in Chicago since then. You know, you know um, I was uh, pleasantly surprised that Tiffany and Demos took this title on. Uh, I first came to know of them when they did their first documentary called Emmanuel, and that was the shooting of the pastor and some parishioners at Emmanuel Church in South Carolina. Uh, One of which was my aunt's friend who got killed. And um, yeah, so, um, so, so after that, uh, I did not realize they were working on another project. And so when Dima shared with me, I, I was, I was just applauding the efforts because we constantly hear about Chicago. I even uh, read uh, Reverend Abernathy's uh, biography that he wrote. And he even, there's a whole section in his book where he talked about him and Dr. King tried to deal with the murder mm-hmm. in Chicago. Mm, Chicago. And, um, and so, so to see Tiffany and Dimas take this on head on uh, was just uh, gave me a sigh of relief because I knew that they would just do what they did. They would bring it home. They would make it raw and bring it to the forefront and not only do it that way, but also come up with next action steps. Mm-hmm. Let anyone who see this film, what can they do to be of help? And that's exactly what they did. They, they have a whole website dedicated where volunteers are needed, you know, to be of support, things of that nature. But one thing that uh, Dimas has shared, and I did not know this, you know, a lot of times when God put on your heart to do something, I mean, we know that he have us so that way we can execute what he's called us to do. But it's amazing sometimes how you are placed in harm's way, you know, uh, doing what you believe you should be doing. Right. And so when he talked about they showing up to the location, their shooting, and then all of a sudden gunshots and they had their children with them. Right. And he said, Tiffany had to, she went and dived on her children. Oh my goodness. To protect them from possibly getting hit by a bullet. And then after that, the whole crew, everybody had to wear bulletproof vests to shoot a film. You know, so, uh, and and Chicago is known for great talent to come, to come yeah. from here. I mean, yes. you know, to have Obama, our president, right. Michael Jordan, you know, I mean, and 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 look how young. And this is what I love about the trailer because you really get a glimpse at the 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 terribleness of this. The young kids. Yeah. I didn't even realize until they panned the camera who was talking. A little boy. Yeah. You know, his he should be talking about. Oh, I'm going to you know study to become a doctor, lawyer. Or whatever it is he he you know inspired to be, but he's talking about he can die, <laughs> and he looked like he was eleven years old. Yeah, 
You mm -hmm. fucking death. Yeah. So this is really a urgent call to action. And, you know, I'm so grateful that it's on a global stage. And I pray that it will encourage many who watch it to want to take action because we have to, we have to move on from there. We have to move on from there. We cannot have gener and it's getting younger and younger and younger. You know, I mean, to hear a three or four year old get shot three times. That's crazy. Oh. That's crazy. So again, we have the link there for you to be able to watch all of the films. The films for Afro that will be presented with African-American women in cinema are July 7th, every other day, July 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, and 15th. I know how to add. <laughs> <laughs> July 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, and 15th will be the films. The link is there for you to register to be, you must be, you must register to be able to see all the films and they will be at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for you to be able to see the films. Um, we're gonna do the Marion Williams trailer one more time. And then we're gonna come up and, and we're gonna come back and wrap up. Um, you still have a, a, a few minutes to click on the link if you wanna come on live and chat with Robin, Amber, and Tara. You have a, a few minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> time is winding up. You have a few minutes. You'd like to click on the StreamYard link and come up and talk with with us this evening. We're gonna show the Marion Williams trailer and then we're gonna come back and find out what's next for Robin, Tara, and Amber. Here's the Marion Williams trailer. But let me tell you what's happening to me. I'm having, I'm having my trouble. Really didn't wasn't interested in the fashion. I see. We were more interested in souls then. You know, people joining the church, and I mean, souls came to Christ. It's not the fine homes and the no, fine cars no. and the jewelry. It's yeah, no. what have you done with your well, life? What have you done to help someone else? Yes, sir. And I certainly want to be, and I want to be a lady. She was like the first lady of the United States. Posters everywhere. She's in town. They loved her overseas. She was the lead singer of the Ward Singers. When Everyone recognized them as the most important group, and everyone recognized her as the most important member. She was the only black gospel singer that was actually honored at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in 1994, sitting up there with Johnny Carson, President and Mrs. Kennedy. I had the big, brave, young voice that changed music. The young Marion, as we know, inspired people. Everyone from Little Richard to James Brown, to all other levels, she was the great inspiration of Nina Simone. I'm happy. She was born, as she always said, to sing the gospel. It was something that was implanted. She had to get a quadruple bypass after she had gotten the Kennedy Center Award and the MacArthur Foundation Award. Her story was great instance of good news and bad times, finally getting the recognition that she deserved and then dying within a year. Absolutely amazing. Um, I want to do great job, Amy. Yes, uh, yes. So we have a, a comment here, Cheryl Ballard Bailey, who said she was privileged as a child to hear her music by way of her grandfather, John Wyman Sally, aka Sal. I remember her visiting my grandparents' home in Germantown. I believe she had an event there. Mm. Awesome. Your, um, that comment. That's great. That's great. Yes. What, what um, year was that? I probably remember. Um, Cheryl, if you're still here, um, Robin asked what year that was, if you remember. She was a little girl. She might not remember. Um, Cousin okay. Kixon, congratulations and blessing to you all. 
Dr. Betty says the scope and right. of films is phenomenal. Wonderful. Dr. Betty, you asked what is the other film? Um, the films are For the Love of Diggs mm -hmm. by Tanya Grady, What's in a Name, the Versace Story, Terrence Gordon. We also need to mention a different way. We didn't have a trailer for that, but a different way by Ambassador Susan Johnson. And that's about, she was um, New York Police Department's first female chaplain, and she talks about her experience with 9-11. Very, very interesting. Then we have, of course, Mary, the legendary Marion Williams, Robin Williams and Amber Monet. And we have Chicago, American mm -hmm. War, which is Tiffany Salaberrios and Dimas Salaberrios. And James Hemmings, America's mm -hmm. Ghost in the Kitchen, mm -hmm. Cheryl Ashville. Yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl says she doesn't remember the year. She was a little girl. <laughs> but she remembers. Oh, yeah. She remembers. Um, your mom visiting her parents and her grandparents' home. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So, um, yeah. Robin, what's next uh, for you? Uh, uh, what's next, next for, for me? I can say I'm supposed to be writing a book. You see these ladies on here and there. They're, very, they're, power, they're a powerhouse. I'm supposed to be writing a book. Tara told me to, uh, my sister, I should be writing a book. And then next thing I know, she was talking about write down stuff that you want to do about a film. Okay. And that just threw me off guard. Um, but since then, um, I am trying to do that. Um, then I told uh, Amber, uh, you know, we might, be able to might do a documentary on me. I don't know if that's powerful enough for wow. uh, um, of how a young gospel um, being in the gospel son, you know, mother being famous and traveling and everything. So a lot of stories I could tell you um, <laughs> about that. Um, and I'm going to keep on writing music for my wife, my wife's uh, Thank you. She has so many things going on that I write a lot of her theme songs and her commercials yeah. and everything. So um, I'll still be doing that. And I do have, uh, well, we do have a, <laughs> we have a poetry and music and um, we, a band. Well, we used to be a band. The band is us now, but, um, uh, we're still writing music for Poetic Soul. That yes. we're um, we have a music that's getting ready to uh, actually feature in August. Um, I did put a trail out, but I'll, I'll put another one out. Um, so yeah, it's I'm I'm gonna stay busy, and I, they're not gonna let me not be busy. So yes. um, <laughs> again, these three ladies and their powerhouses, trust me, and, and they're on their own way. Don't take this for granted. Um, my wife is a wonderful. Mm -hmm. She can do it all. She do voiceover. She she knows how to be a a, a moderator. Uh, she does. She's got her own shows, um, and she she is actually a doctor. You know, she always asks me, "What's my name?" And I tell her, "Your name is Kay." You know, I ain't you know. <laughs> but you know, rightfully so. My wife is a doctor. She has a lot of titles, but one of them is she is a doctor, and um, she's doing amazing. Tara, I gotta say this before we. Tara is like is my you know again my sister. We met, we know each other. Well, I know her, you know, and her whole family. I know her even when she was younger, um, and we have grown. She, my mother knew her family and so we she was always amazed about my mother and, and getting the right getting her her right dues of, of you know being recognized and Tara she's been people that's very important I have to say that is very important 
because when God puts people, you need people in your life that that's doing something that can inspire you. And this young lady is a go-getter. I mean, she pushes you to the limit. She pushes, she pushes you to where you didn't think you could do it. And um, I love her for that. And Amber, that's my other daughter. Um, you can't do no wrong. She can't do no wrong, really. Um, because this young lady, the talent that she has, yes. it's great. Mm -hmm. And things are going to happen big for her because of the African American women and the blessings through that and blessings through me for making this this documentary. Things are going to happen for her, and she's going to be she's going to be all right. And I'm Mr. Robin going to make sure of that too. So um, thank you. So that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Getting on y'all nerves. Getting on little nerves. <laughs> Um, God. <laughs> pray, pray, pray. <laughs> <laughs> I get y'all. Oh, I see you got it. Um, Monet, um, <laughs> and I, I, I shared something with Amber the other night, and uh, we are just so, so, so proud of her and her work on this film, and um. <laughs> I really I shared something with her the other night about how proud um, I am of her and how proud we are of her. And um, we talked about some other things that we're not going to go into necessarily now. But um, I want to say this: you know, Amber has been such a blessing and been so so intentional mm. with doing this documentary and. It, it it just goes to show you know some so many times we we don't always give our our young people mm -hmm. the credit and the, and the accolades that they deserve mm -hmm. and you know we're, we're, we will talk about them in a heartbeat when yep. they do the right mm -hmm. thing yep. you know we will bless them. that's so <laughs> true we really will we really will but you know when when they do things that are just they do such amazing things and um, I want to say that to you, Amber, that, you know, we just so really are so blessed by not only your talent and not only your gifting, but also by your work ethic, mm. by your intentional, your intentionality when you're doing your work. And so I just wanted to say that to you. And so tell us before we all start crying. How are you going to do this to me? <laughs> Here we go. Before we Here all we start go. crying. <laughs> Man, you know, is Karen trying to get me messed up? You can't. I know, I know. eyelashes and everything going to be coming. I know, up. that's why I don't put any on anymore. <laughs> so no. Amber, tell us what's next for you. Yeah, um, This piece in particular is always going to be a very special piece to me because it's the first film I made for one, but it's uh, the one from my mom, my, my beautiful angel, um, got to watch and see me make before she gained her wings. I um, actually was in her house or her apartment and when she moved to Philadelphia last last summer when I was interviewing Richard mm -hmm. Smallwood, the oh, gospel wonderful. icon, and she's a huge Richard Smallwood foot film. She was in the corner at just sitting there still, just like watching me. She told all of her friends, her coworkers, she's like, my baby is it? Like she was so genuinely happy and excited that I was pursuing my passion. So. I've gotten really a lot of drive and passion to just pursue this with yeah. everything I have in my fiber. Um, and so I'm excited because I'm working on another film right now. Oh, great. Uh, it's a full length documentary film as well. And it is about two football player, Temple alumni, uh, no. Temple University alumni football players who read to daycares. They read stories to daycares yeah, yeah. because they realize how important childhood literacy is to inner cities and uh, the violence in inner cities. Uh, mm -hmm. Because those four and five year olds that struggle with reading usually fall out of school mm -hmm. and definitely have to find other ways to mm -hmm. entertain themselves. And ultimately sometimes that ends in violence. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm really excited. We are in post production for that, and wow. so, I'm yeah. just going just keep keep telling stories, like. Okay. And of course, I'll always, you know, always have my. I like to say my um, um, 
my my family uh, i'm thinking of the word my grandma used to always say your um it takes a village mm. yeah. so yeah. i have a great village with yes you do miss tara dr yeah. karen mm. aa wick mr robin mm. and I, I i always cherish my village that's one thing that my mom my grandmother and my father instilled in me your village is really who who has uplifted you when you were nobody or who, when you were learning and when you don't know like right. those are the people that instill so many great values in you so yeah beautiful awesome awesome miss tara yes yeah. so much going on i don't even know what to say busy yeah, bee. Bee. Tell us that's next. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was. It was confirmed today that I'm getting an award in Africa. Uh, I don't have all the details yet. I'm not going to go. Uh, I have to submit my thank you speech and all that by Thursday, and wow. uh, so I'm very happy about that. That's awesome. Um, we're working on our African American Women in Cinema. Uh, upcoming 22nd annual film festival, which we were looking to launch right before COVID, but now we're going mm -hmm. to do it online in November. And Amber, we'll be very happy to show your next film. I think that'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. So excited. Yeah. So, uh, and a myriad mm -hmm. of other things. Uh, you know, we went to Tulsa, and some great and exciting uh, opportunities have come out of there that we are uh, certainly that we have in the pipeline. And I look forward to talking about that much later, but yeah, that's what's happening now. Awesome, that is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to attempt a short film for the festival, right? On color yes. to do my panel. Yes, and we're really yeah, excited. I will be that. calling you. <laughs> that's so exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to do the panel on colorism, and I, I'm really looking, really looking forward to that. Uh, I am no, by no means, am I a filmmaker, but um, I'll, you know, just pray for me. Um, so my sister Yolanda says, "God knew what He was doing when He told you to marry my sis." I love you. He knew who you needed in your life through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Greg and I are so proud of both of you. Oh, we pray God continue to bless and keep you both. That's wonderful. Nice. That's right. wonderful. Did you Thank see that other question, He Did you see that other question? I, <laughs> did you see that other question, he? Did I do what? Did you see the other question, Gray asked? I know it is. It could, he got to be joking. He might not be, but he asked. I, I wanted to ask the question to the panel. Are there any rumors floating out there to create a black version of the Little Rascal? Well, um, Bill Cosby <laughs> uh, bought all the rights to the Little Rascals because he felt that the Buckwheat character was an embarrassment uh, mm. to the black community. And so wow. um, because of that, uh, there has never been there has not, from that point, uh, been any conversations about revisiting uh, the Little Rascals, as far as I know. Wow, that's great. I thought you were getting, but that's good. That's good. Yeah, and I, I also know my brother. I, I also saw that um, Spike Lee is the president of the Cannes Film Festival. Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, he's the president of the Jurors, which is okay. really good. Um, the wow. jurors, which we know, select the films to participate in the main main events of the film festival in the categories. And I'm grateful that he uh, was able to be the president. The past presidents uh, were like people like Martin Scorsese. So it was good to see Spike Lee uh, have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Wow, yes. that's great. He has so a great. very uh, unique eye for films as well, which I really appreciate. Not only, of course, inclusive inclusiveness, but he's very much about uh, the storytelling, which is yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. So the Cannes Film Festival starts tomorrow. Well, it officially started, started today. today. <laughs> it started today, right. but. Um, the legendary Marion Williams will 
premiere tomorrow, mm -hmm. Wednesday, July 11th, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You must register to watch the film. All of the films associated with African-American women in cinema in partnership with Covina and Afrique will be July 7th, 11th, no, try it again, Karen. Yep. July 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, and 15th. We encourage you to please watch all of the films. Please support. Please spread the word about all of these films uh -huh. in the festival. And we are so honored to have had Tara Renee here and Amber Monet and Robin Williams. I am Karen Moore. I'm getting and nervous. I'm getting nervous now. Anything else they want to say before we head off? I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. You know, nervous. Almost, You're nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm, now, now I'm getting nervous now. Every, every, all the interviews and stuff now, we, we, we keep counting down them hours and stuff. You know, yeah, wow, wow. Terry, he tried to get a little brand the other day. Oh, <laughs> you know, he tried, oh he tried to get a little, uh, you know. Thought he was not Mr. Robin. <laughs> no, no, Amber, you know that wasn't me. You know, not uh, the diva over there. Uh, yeah, he tried to think I was trying to be grand. And That's stuff. right. I told her, I said, well, you know, you, I am famous, though. You know, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> we're all famous. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, she would say, all famous. Right. Yeah, we're all famous. Right. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Well, it ain't all about you right now. <laughs> Tara, I love you. That's, I love that's you Tara's too. uh that's Tara's uh professional laugh. That's her professional laugh. But that, that behind that laugh, I know what that means. <laughs> you gotta have one. I know everyone. Right, right. Yeah, yeah you're people can tell it's really it, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so what much. I go Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone that tuned in. And again, please yes. click on the link and sign up to register to see all of these amazing films that will be presented this week through African American Women in Cinema. I wish you guys a blessed, blessed, blessed night. And we'll see you at the festival. Yes. Yay. Thank you guys. Love Thank you, everybody. Love Thank you, Dr. Karen. Thank you, Robin. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.